Ann S. Pierce started life as a North Atlantic scallop trawler, enduring some of the harshest conditions which Mother Nature can whip up on the open ocean. Originally built in 1982, this vessel was designed to be a workhorse, braving the rough seas and extreme weather of the North Atlantic. However, in 2021, the Annis Pierce underwent a comprehensive and transformative rebuild in Newfoundland, Canada, essentially being reborn as a state-of-the-art exploration superyacht. This rebuild was so extensive that the vessel is now classed as a new build. Every aspect of the boat was meticulously upgraded, turning what was once a rugged any-weather workhorse of the North Atlantic into a luxury liveaboard explorer yacht that has the ability to roam the world's oceans throughout the year. Now, there is a possibility that in the not-too-distant future, this incredible vessel might be offered for sale. If you would like to be the first to know about this, then make sure you sign up for my free newsletter. I will leave a link in the video description, and I'll leave a link pinned in the comments as well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome aboard the Anne S. Pierce. What an incredible boat she is. It's hard to believe that a year ago when I first heard about this boat through an article that I read in Passage Maker magazine, 12 months later or thereabouts, I'd actually end up being on board the boat, spending an evening on board with the owner and his incredible crew. And of course, shooting some footage so I can show you, my subscribers, around this unique, exemplary, true steel explorer yacht. Before I do take you around, please don't forget to give the video a like. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. But anyway, enough from me. Let me show you around. So good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Of course, you join me on board this really interesting converted vessel that is now living life as an explorer yacht, the Anne S. Pierce. I'm going to start this tour on the swim platform. As you can see, you get great access down into the water here. Access gate over there on the port side. And if we look over here on the starboard side, there is one of two tenders. And we'll go up and check out the other tender a little bit later on in the yacht tour. Let's access into the cockpit area via this starboard access gate over here. As you can see, we've got a barbecue here. When I came on board last night, uh, they cooked me up some really nice chicken on that barbecue, had a really, really nice meal. Got a great seating area. Again, this is where we sat last night and had a meal and had a chat, had a good catch up. And it really is a nice place to sit and take in the view of the seascape or wherever it is you're going to be anchored up alongside or if you're going into the marina. It's a great place to come and sit and chill out. Over here on the port side, as you can see, got some big heavy duty bollards there. Another seating area over here as well. So a great place to sit and relax and take in that view. Let's pan around there and show you over the transom from the inboard side. But yeah, look at that steel work. Really, really rugged, heavy duty stuff here. Let's spin around now. What I'm gonna do with this tour is gonna show you around the upper deck first, and then I'm gonna take you in to the interior spaces, give you a sneak peek of the saloon there. But let's head up this ladder over here on the starboard side. So up here, of course, we've got the boat deck, a big old crane there, a midships. And there is the second tender over there on the port side. And if I pan around, you can see the chocks there for the other tender when it's not in use. Uh, one of the things obviously that I noticed about this boat when I came on board is the fact you have these domes located on this section of the boat. Ordinarily, I guess you'd find them up on the radar mast, but the guys on board were telling me that in terms of space, saving space, uh, they were positioned here for that reason. If I show you now the radar mast up there, look, you can see that nice clean arrangement thanks to the fact that these domes are located here. And of course, we have the Starlink dish. Um, the first time that I've actually used Starlink on board a boat, and I must admit, I've been mega impressed with the download and upload speeds of Starlink. I mean, it really has been a massive game changer uh, for boat owners and crew and guests. 
uh, really impressive bit of kit. But yeah, there is the Starling antenna. I'll pan over here and show you obviously we've got access up onto uh, the pilot house, both on the port side uh, and over there on the starboard side as well. All right, let's continue forwards. Head over here onto the port side and we'll ascend these four steps. And make sure you stay tuned because later on in the video, I'm going to take you into the pilot house. But for now, let's go up onto the sun deck stroke flybridge because yes, this boat does have a flybridge as well. And there it is. So looking off, we've got a seating area here. Again, a great place to sit back. And you do get privacy here as well. Not only do the railings afford you some additional privacy when you're using this space, but they also help to deflect the wind should you happen to be using this area when the wind picks up. And of course, the modular furniture means you can arrange this area however you want to. And look over here on the starboard side, we've got another barbecue. If I walk around the mast, and we have the ladder there, it takes us up. So great access for maintenance and for doing any other tasks that needs to be done at the top of that mast there. Big old radar, one of two radars over there. If I take you round over to the port side and move forward, and I'll look back and I can show you the radar mast in its full glory. But yeah, look, another seating area here. So another great place to come and sit and relax uh, with your friends and family enjoying that view and if we move forward you'll see we've got a step ascend that one step and here we find the controls which at the moment are obviously undercover but essentially you've got the same controls here as what you've got down below in the main wheelhouse and obviously we'll check that out in a minute but first let me sit on this seat and show you that view look at that some other super yachts over here there's Nero there, what a beautiful boat that is. Yeah, nice sunny, calm day in Antibes. I'm squinting the wave out my sunglasses on. Got a windbreaker here as well, so when you are on the way, if you decide you want to sit up here and it is still a bit windy, uh, you've got a nice windbreaker there just to give you some protection from the wind. We spin around now and I'll show you that radar mast. So as I say, this boat has two main navigation radars. And if we look up the top, we've got more aerials there for the VHF. But you can see why the sat domes are located where they are, because there's no room for them here uh, on this radar mast. So it makes good sense to have them where they are. Right, let's turn around. I'm going to take you down onto the bow now. The boat's hull, a robust 9.5 millimetres of steel, rises to a formidable 12.7 millimetres at the bow and stern. When towering waves crash against her, this hull does not flinch. It stands firm, a bulwark against the ocean's fury, ensuring a safe and steady passage, even through the most challenging sea states. Over here, of course, on the port side, we have one of the life rafts. Great position in terms of if you need to deploy it, you can deploy it very quickly and very easily. Uh, of course, vital for sea safety. If we move forward now, if I show you this space and pan around, you can just see how much space the crew have got to work with up here. Another life raft over there on the starboard side. And there we have the windlass for the anchor. I love the fact as well, you've got this breakwater here. So when you are going through that big stuff, fighting through those big seas, uh, you've got this point here that helps to break any water that ends up coming on over the deck as you're punching through the big waves. When it comes to her ground tackle, we have a hull bolt winch, a true workhorse that spools 700 feet of cable, backed by 15 feet of heavy chain, and at the end of it all, a 2,000 kilogram anchor. Of course, with a setup like this, it's not just about anchoring, it's about peace of mind. When the weather turns foul and the seas rage, this is what keeps the vessel secure, and this is what allows for a restful night knowing she's not going to go anywhere, even when the weather turns bad. Okay, let's head back off. I'm going to take you inside now and show the interior spaces, uh, starting off with the saloon. Let's head back down the starboard side deck here. Let's send up these steps. 
as we're walking around, you can really get a sense of the commercial heritage uh, of this boat. You know, the fact that you're not going to get any standing water up here at all, obviously, because of the grated deck. Uh, but I love the feature. I love that. I love the, the feel and the sense of the, the commercial kind of history of this boat is still very much evident uh, as you walk around. Back out onto the boat deck again. Let's continue heading aft on the starboard side. Head down these steps, back into the cockpit again. Down we go. There's always plenty to grab onto as you're walking around the boat as well. So when you are making your way around the upper deck in the heavy seas, you're always going to have something to grab onto. All right, let's go into the saloon now. So over here on the port side, as you can see, got a seating area where you can sit and relax, have a wine or two, surrounded by your favorite people. And of course, got loads of natural light coming in here thanks to these large windows. Three over there on the port side. If I pan around and show you the formal dining area over here on the starboard side, you see you've got another three large windows there as well. Uh, and lots of headroom in here. I would say there's probably a good maybe seven foot of headroom, as the guess. As you can see, we've got an air conditioning unit over there on that bulkhead. And look at that traditional stove over there on the starboard side. If I take you over here, you can see there's lots of space. One of the benefits of having 16 Fujitsu AC splits on board is the ease of maintenance. When cruising in remote areas where access to specialized parts is limited, a failed unit can be swiftly replaced without the need for prolonged stays in a yard or costly engineering work. All right, let's head forward now. As you can see, there's a Dutch door over here on the starboard side. Beyond this door, you gain access to the starboard side of the main deck. The forward door leads down to the formidable engine room, while the aft door opens to a storage area for propane canisters. Additionally, there is also a boarding gate here for easy access on and off the boat. And of course, make sure you stay tuned because later on in the video, I'll be taking you around the very impressive engine room. And I know that's one area you won't want to miss. And over here, these stairs lead up into the wheelhouse and we'll go up there in a couple of minutes. But first, I want to show you around the galley and what a galley this is. It's got a central island over there. So this morning when we were sat having some breakfast, this is where we're all having our catch up after a decent night's sleep. But look at the amount of space you've got in here for storage. There's absolutely tons of it. Obviously, fridge freezer over there cooker, gas hob, huge gas hob here, massive oven. And if we continue forward, so you've got a twin stainless steel sink. And when you are prepping the food and making up a meal, you look at the view you get. At the moment, obviously, we can see Nero over there. And what a sight to behold when you're making a meal for the guests on board. Another fridge freezer over there forward. Over here on the starboard side, just take you over here, we've got a day head. Give you a quick look in there. Make sure no one's in there, obviously. But yeah, here we have one of the day heads. Decent sized day head there. Shut that door. And as you can see over here on this bulkhead, behind these doors, we have the dumb waiter. So that goes up onto the flybridge as well, which is great for just sending up your food, your drinks, whatever it is you want to send up there. So yeah, there we have the dumb waiter. I'll shut that. Open up this door. And a pantry there for more storage. Some wine over there. Last night we had some really nice red wine on board actually. Um, the whole time I've been on board, the crew and the owner have made me feel really, really welcome. I've really enjoyed it, really have. I'm going to show you the cabin that I stayed in in a second. Down that stairwell leads us into the crew accommodation area and communal area. I'll show you around there in a second. But first, let me show you around the accommodation. So just so you can orientate yourselves, starboard side, port side, forward. Let's start in the owner's cabin. Let's take you in there. Nice big double bed that obviously you can walk around and check out these windows. What a view to behold when you wake up 
first thing in the morning, open up the blinds and take in that view, spectacular. Again, we've got lots of space, both on either side of the bed. Some drawers there, look. Loads of space to keep your laptop or iPads, whatever it is you've got with you. And even more space over here on the port side. On this bulkhead, we've got a TV that pivots out. So if you do want to catch up with a Netflix or YouTube, whatever it is you want to watch, you can get a good view of that from your bed. Lots of hanging locker space here. Clearly, I'm not going to open these up. Uh, because the owner does stay on board six months a year on average so this boat gets a lot of use but check out the ensuite and the space in here toilet over there and if i pan around again we've got lots of cabinetry lots of space to keep all your toiletries i mean personally i'd find i'd be hard pressed to fill all this locker space up with my stuff but there we go, that's what you get from being in the Navy. You learn to travel light. Standard salute there as you were. And look, if I pan around here, look at the size of that shower. Absolutely massive. It's almost like a steam room, the same sort of size steam room that you'd find in a spa, or certainly the spas that I've been to. Right, let's turn around, head forward. I'm gonna take you across onto the pool side now and show you where I spent the night in an incredibly comfortable bed. And here we are, this is where I spent last night. All my stuff over here, as you can see, all of my gear, all my camera gear, there's plenty of space for it all. Uh, loads of sockets as well, so you can charge everything up. Got my Mavic there that we uh, flew last night to get some good shots of the boat on charge at the moment, all my other bits and bobs. Some drawers under that. Some fantastic lights on this bulkhead as well. There's a really nice ambience when you're in here at night, getting ready to get your head down with the lights on. Creates a really nice atmosphere. Air conditioning unit up there on that bulkhead. And again, look at the size of this window. First thing I did this morning when I woke up, put the blind up and took in that view. We're only, what, maybe five feet away from the water there on a flat, calm day in Antibes, surrounded by super yachts. What a way to start the day. I'll take you into my ensuite now. Again, you're gonna notice lots of space in here, plenty of room to keep all your toiletries, big old mirror, and this is, or was, my shower. Again, big, decent sized shower powerful jet of water coming out of that. Sometimes on boats, you know, you turn on the shower and you get a trickle of water coming out, but not on here. But yeah, really decent size. Toiletries over there. Shut that back up and spin around. I'll take you to the other cabins. So back out into the corridor, we'll move forward. And as you can see, you've got plenty to grab onto still when you're move, moving around the boat. Uh, in heavy seas, grab onto this so you don't end up bouncing off the bulkheads. But over here on the starboard side, so this is the VIP cabin. As you can see, again, we've got lots of space, big double bed that you can walk around on both sides. More drawers over there, lots of space to keep all your stuff. And check out the amount of PowerPoints that you've got there. I could literally bring all of my camera gear in here, plug everything in and everything would charge because I'm not gonna run out of socket space, that's for sure. Again, we've got two massive windows over there. Plenty of natural light coming into this area. And you can walk around both sides of the bed, obviously. And let's check out the view from the starboard side. And there we have the coastline of Antibes. What a beautiful place to come and stay. Absolutely love it here. But again, look, you'll notice just how much cabinetry we've got here. Loads and loads of space to keep all your gear. Let's quickly show you into the ensuite again. A sink over here on the starboard side. And more locker space, another massive shower in there. A little vanity area over here with more space underneath to keep all your stuff. And obviously you've got the toilet 
behind that door. Right, let me take you into the fourth guest cabin now. Give a little knock. Open this up. And here we have another double cabin. Again, see those big windows there? Really taking in that seascape. I think the windows are definitely one of the standout features when it comes to the guest accommodation on board because just the views you're getting and the fact that you're only sort of a few feet above the waterline as well. But again, you'll notice lots of space, plenty of room underneath the bed as well to stow your gear. And obviously we've got another ensuite here. Sink, vanity area, more cabinetry underneath. Another big shower over here. And there is the toilet. Um, behind that door, more space for storage. But let's retreat out of here, back into the main corridor again. And let me take you forward once more. I'll show you the laundry area. Over here on the starboard side, moving forward. And here we have the laundry area. Washer, dryers, more pantry space over there on the port side, more refrigeration space over there as well. Again, plenty of headroom in here. Air conditioning unit up here, so when you are doing the laundry, you're not gonna be overheating. Everywhere on this boat is nice and cool. The air conditioning layout is fantastic. Look, security lights there, very important. In the rare event of you losing main power for the generators, you have the emergency lights coming on. And there is an access point that leads out onto the upper deck. Again, a very important safety feature. Right, let's head aft. We'll go down into the crew area. And then I'm gonna take you up into the wheelhouse and show you around there before finishing the boat tour in the engine room. Let's descend now into the crew area. Over here on this bulkhead, we've got some various switches for the lighting on board. But let's head down into this space. One of the things that I love about this boat is that the crew accommodation on board is to the same finish as what you've got in the guest accommodation. Uh, you know what they say about happy crew, it's vital that you've got a crew uh, that are happy. And I think the living areas that you've got here really do the crew justice. Nice big double bed there. Hanging locker space over there. Air conditioning unit on that bulkhead. Obviously you've got a TV here. So when you've had a hard day of work, you can come and lay and relax and watch your favorite YouTubers. Of course, we've got an ensuite here for this crew cabin, a shower, toilet, and sink. Head over here, back out into the main area. Show you this look, pantry there. Lots of tomato sauce, ketchup, and other bits and bobs. All right, let's shut that take you into the crew mess. So L-shaped seating area over here with a table, another air conditioning unit on that bulkhead. And over here on the port side, we have the crew galley. And what a crew galley that is. Massive induction hob there, loads of space, lots of cabinetry to stow, all of your favorite food, big fridge freezer over there on the starboard side. And if we move forward, look, we've even got a mini gym. And lots more storage as well. Another air conditioning unit over there. A ladder that leads us up onto the upper deck. And let's just have a look behind this door. Here we have another day head. Okay, let's come out of here. One final look around. But yeah, let me know what you think of the uh, crew area in the comments. I was really, really impressed by it. As I say, there is so much space down here. Uh, at the moment, there's a crew of four on board. And what a wonderful crew they have been. They've made me feel really, really welcome. So big thanks to them. Just quickly show you behind this door. We have an access door into the engine room, which we'll be checking out in a second. And over there, we have a sewage treatment plant over there on the port side. 
incredibly well maintained boat, really, really well maintained. But I'm going to take you into the engine room a little bit later on. Uh, first, did I open up this door? Well, that's another crew cabin here, look. There we go. Give you a quick look in there. I don't want to spend too much time in the crew cabins out of respect for the privacy of the crew on board. Let's turn around, head back up the stairs. And turn and face aft, back through the galley. So I'm going to take you up into the wheelhouse now before we finish in the engine room. So back over here onto the starboard side, into the lobby area where we find the Dutch door. And let's ascend this staircase so I can show you around the massive wheelhouse that we've got here. Uh, really, really impressive setup up here. If you are a wheelhouse pilot house aficionado like myself, I'm fairly confident you are gonna be super impressed by this area. Check out the amounts of glass that you've got up here. It really does have the look and feel of a kind of tug really in terms of the fact you've got the window split over two levels, an upper and a lower. And look, you can walk right in front of the helm position. So when you are coming alongside, or when you're at anchor, you get a great view of everything all around you. There we have that impressive bow layout. Speaking of docking, I am sure that many of you have already noticed that this boat does also have wing stations as well to help simplify close quarters maneuvering, which of course is important with a boat of this size. I love it up here. I could spend pretty much all of my time up here. Three big comfortable seats there. Look, obviously a captain's chair, a midships, big traditional ship's wheel over there. And here we have the main helm station. So all the switches over here for uh, thruster controls, VHF radio over there on the port side. And on the center console, we have three displays, multifunction displays there. A little keyboard, a little mouse ball, so you can move your little cursor around on the screen. And over here on the starboard side, have another multifunction display, more VHF radios over there. Controls for the bow and the stern thruster and the thruster controls for the single engine as well. But if I take a moment just to sit in the captain's chair, just so you can get an appreciation of the view you get up here. I mean, look at that. You've pretty much got almost 360 degree view around the captain's chair. So navigating this boat, this boat at the moment is operated by the owner. The owner is the, also the captain of this vessel uh, as well. Dutch door access out onto the deck over there on the starboard side. And of course, you've got another door over there on the port side as well. So one more second just to take in that view. I'm gonna head aft and show you around the aft section of this formidable pilot house. All right, let's stand up. As you see, we've got a seating area again behind the captain's chair. So any guests on board, if they wanna come up and Watch the action, it's a great place for them to sit. And check this out over here, look at this stove, this wood burner stove. With the hot plates on top as well, so you can bring a kettle up here, cook up a brew while you're navigating this beautiful vessel. Big L-shaped seating area over here on the port side. As you can see, plenty of room for all of your guests and friends on board. So you can sit down here and catch up and decide where you're gonna be navigating to next as you cruise around the med, which is what this boat is doing at the moment. And let you notice, if we head aft, we've got a captain's berth here as well, which is also ideal for night watch keeping. So if you've got two of you taking it in turns to do the watch keeping, there's somewhere for someone to sleep. And here you can see, we've got the door for the dumb waiter. And look, plenty of space over here to keep all of your wine nice and cool. And we've got a day head aft over here on the starboard side as well. And what a day head that is. Check out the views from that day head. Two massive windows in here. Look, you can get a great view of that boat deck as well with a crane and one of the tenders. Right, so that is the pilot house. Let me know what you think in the comments. Got a sink over there. I'm gonna take you down now into the engine room. And I know the engine room is somewhere where a lot of you have been looking forward to having a look around. So let's head back down there 
to send these steps on the starboard side heading aft. Back through the saloon again. Turn around, back through the galley. Let's walk through here. Back down these stairs into the crew area. As we descend down these stairs, I'm going to turn left, pivot around 180 degrees, open this door back through the sewage treatment plant area to reveal the engine room. Welcome to the beating heart of this explorer yacht, the engine room. Of course, this space houses the intricate systems that propel this vessel across the globe and provide all the comforts of home while at sea. The main engine on board this boat is a CAT D399, boasting 16 cylinders, which delivers a substantial 1,100 horsepower. It is a powerful workhorse, capable of reaching 1,100 RPM, but is typically operated at a more efficient 800 RPM. A 4 to 1 reduction gearbox transfers that power to a massive 9 foot propeller, ensuring efficient thrust even in challenging conditions. For electrical needs, the boat has two CAT generators. The larger, a CAT 3306, not only produces 70 kilowatts of electricity, but also powers the hydraulic thrusters through a Danfoss power takeoff system. These thrusters are 26 inch Westec at the bow and the 22 inch cobalt at the stern provide precise maneuvering capabilities. The primary generator while underway is a CAT 3304, a four cylinder 100 horsepower unit delivering 70 kilowatts of power. And for quiet nights at anchor, the boat uses a smaller, more efficient CAT 2.2, a four cylinder 65 horsepower generator. In addition to propulsion and power generation, this engine room houses several essential systems. There's a blue water desalinization unit capable of producing 70 gallons of fresh water per hour from seawater. A Sally Crew shore power converter ensures the boat can connect to electrical grids worldwide. There are two air compressors that supply the main engine and various tools, three 50 gallon electric water heaters, and two high capacity bilge pumps. That double as fire pumps. A 15 horsepower electric hydraulic pump powers several key systems including the AMCO knuckle boom crane that we saw on the boat deck, the hull bolt winch and the capstans. The fuel capacity on this explorer yacht is substantial with six storage tanks and a day tank holding a total of 21,000 gallons. This not only provides ample range but also acts as ballast to enhance stability. Talking of ballast, there's also a 2000 gallon seawater tank located in the bow. This boat has a top speed of around 12 knots with a cruising speed of nine knots. When motoring along at her cruising speed, then you can expect a range of around an incredible 7,000 nautical miles. When it comes to stabilizers, this boat is equipped with bilge kills, fuel and seawater ballast and 30,000 pounds of steel shot in the engine room. After a recent inclination test, it's confirmed to be very stable. But what do you think of this impressive engine room? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. So I've got one more area to show you in the engine room. If we come off, you'll see we've got a workshop area. So when you are doing that Atlantic crossing, if there's any bits of minor maintenance you need to do, any tooling, then this is a fantastic area to do your essential bits of maintenance. And vice over there on that workbench, loads of tools behind there. Another caged area there to keep all your stuff. So when you are going through the choppy stuff, you're not going to be losing all your stuff on the deck. It's all neatly stowed away, look. More tools over there on the starboard side. Drill over there, look. You can do some welding down here as well. But yeah, what a great space. You know, if you are an engineer or a mechanic, marine mechanic, let me know what you think of this area. And finally, let me just open up this hatch so I can show you 
the steering gear behind here. Let's open this up. The steering gear on this boat is a Wagner T18. This robust system delivers an impressive 20,400 pound feet of torque at 1,000 psi, ensuring reliable performance. It's capable of achieving 45 degrees hard over, providing exceptional maneuverability in all conditions. So thanks for joining me on this yacht tour. I'll be really interested to hear what you think of this boat. So share your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner of this incredible vessel for letting me come on board and stay the night. We had some fantastic conversations, had some really nice food, enjoyed some red wine together with the crew, and it's been such a wonderful time. I really do want to say a massive thank you to the owner and the crew. Remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. You can find my contact details through the link that I'll leave in the comments and the video description. And remember, if you're looking to charter your own luxury explorer yacht experience, then get in contact with me. I've teamed up with TJB Super Yachts so that I can bring you the charter experience of a lifetime. If you want to find out more about that, you know where to go, head to the link in my bio or the link pinned in the comments or the video description. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out the video that I made about this converted former Dutch beam trawler. You'll find the relevant link in the video description. And if you are thinking about embarking on your own conversion project, then feel free to get in contact with me I've built up some fantastic contacts over the last couple of years. Ready, go. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. My four-year-old daughter suggested you might be bored of hearing me ask you to subscribe, so she stepped in for me instead.